stubborn or what are the features? Is it that they have escape mechanisms? Is it hijacking the immune system, all of the above? Yeah, so this is going to be a very complex answer and it's something that I actively try and display on my page, um, especially from a layman's terms perspective. Um, and it's the hallmarks of cancers. Have you read those papers? I, I've read some of them, yeah, when yeah, you alluded so, to it in the email. Yeah, exactly. And so they, they, we've been adapting those, those biological mechanisms for how cancers uh, utilize a very diverse uh, amount of strategies to, to continue to sustain their growth, whether it's, uh, like you said, hijacking immune cells or suppressing immune responses or utilizing microbes to kind of, in their particular environment, continue to uh, combat for resources and, and continue to grow or whether it's not hijacking nearby blood vessels via a process called angiogenesis uh, to grow towards a tumor and continue to supply something like oxygen uh, when a tumor becomes devoid of oxygen, which is a condition known as hypoxia. So there's all of these genetic and environmental contributions, um, whether it's through mutations or environmental stimuli, which can help to drive an environment to sustain tumor growth, cell division, and metabolism. Right, and that's what, you know, is interesting because I used to, you know, inappropriately, and I saw on your post too, sometimes you're like, oh, I've, I've learned something because of social media. I used to say, you know, well, what happens when you have a good response and all of a sudden the, the cancer cell, like, gets smarter? And, and Sid, he was like, well, remember, I mean, you're not saying that they get smarter. Like, he was, you know, kind of speaking to the point that a lot of times the majority of the cancer will melt away. You need about 300 million cells to see it on average CT scan. He's like, okay. but if you have a high burden, the chance that you have a, a, a mutation that's already going to be resistant sometimes will show itself when it grows big enough, like in 15 you know, months or so. Or That's why a lot of comments I would get would be like, oh, pharma industry and cancer, they just you know, take care of it 15 months and, and coincidentally it starts to reappear. And I was like, there's some merit. I've learned a lot of these comments. I'm like, there's some, I could see how it seems that way. But really it's, again, once you know that it takes 200 million cells, you're like, oh, that, that was already pre-suited to escape the mechanism, but 99.9% .9 of it would. So like they were all her too high, for example, mm -hmm. and they all like started to shrink up. And then you have a little tiny colony that you can't see that like, you know, basically declares itself. But what you're saying is, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of are getting smarter. It's not the fact that they're having a brain and saying, oh, I need to make this target. But what happens is, if, for example, when you were talking about, you know, to block all the blood vessel flow, like say that's the oil and gas for the cancer. Mm -hmm. We use drugs like that, TKIs, Bevacizumab, a lot of those that are like to be juicy cancers, like renal cell carcinoma mm -hmm. and, and, and colon cancers. And, and, and there's certain cancers where it's pretty effective to just cut off that blood supply. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying, and it makes sense, is that environment around the cancer, either before treatment is one thing, but then even after treatment, if you're blocking it, there's obviously signals and stuff being released to where the cancer cell doesn't think necessarily, but all of a sudden has to perform or basically reshape itself or reassemble itself to then accommodate for that you know, situation. And in, so in that sense, kind of, they do get smarter, right? But more so, they just adapt to their environment like our regular cells do. Yeah, so I think a lot of people, when they view cancer, they kind of view it in this lens that it's a homogenous or simple cellular population. Um, but as tumor cells grow, when they, especially in in later stages, they develop kind of in different ways. And this is where, uh, when we start our, our education, and I think it's the same in your, your MD track courses, you kind of learn as of, of cancer as a, like an evolutionary disease. And this, this is where we go back to the adaptation. So a single cancer or a single tumor can develop in a bunch of different ways.
and they will kind of grow out when you take care of um, you know the cells that the, the chemotherapy had targeted. So that's often some some reasons why we see uh, chemo resistance in the clinic. Um, so that's that's one way um, one way we can combat chemo resistance is by combining various therapies to target those multiple mechanisms that might exist in the various types of cells that have evolved very, very differently throughout the whole uh, entirety of the tumor. Yeah, and that's interesting that you say that because that's why I think there's a lot of people looking at, and I myself usually favor this strategy, is you know, somebody may ask, okay, if I have, you know, 20 lesions or 15, like, why don't we just go, if you're telling me, you know, that I can't resect them all or take them all out, which ideally, you know, you would think, why not? If they're in different places, then I had lost all the cancer. Well, one, that's all the cancer you can see, but obviously we know that there's more than that. Right. But two, there's something called stereotactic radiation or SBRT, where you just basically neutralize or nuke that little colony. And this, this conversation is all about oligometastatic disease. And that means you just, oligo means in Latin, like a couple, you know, one or two couple places, and you take care of the primary lesion but the way I like to use it and again the data is still like is is trying to be formulated to support it is once you have that initial kill like you said if 99.99 percent of it is is uh, fallible or basically like melts away then if I see one lesion being stubborn or start to come up that's when I'll do what's called 